Ball back again with another match day preview. But before we go for that preview, I'm going to quickly go for a run to somewhere where I haven't been before. Let's go and investigate. So, I'm heading off the beaten track and we're going to head up this path itself round the back of Durham Woods and we'll see where it goes. But there's been six or seven rumours. I've had six or seven different people come out and say to me that the Sunderland versus Dunning the match will be missing a key player, Ross Stewart. Ross Stewart is rumoured to have an injury or COVID and could miss out on Saturday. That would be an absolute disaster. Oh dear me how decisions decisions there's a fork in the road the main path goes this way but off the beaten trail could lead to somewhere very interesting right i think you know unlike the unthinkable of of, of not having ross stewart in the side i think the thinkable is to go this way oh, well i found another path and lots of cars up here there's lots of cars so where are we going where will we come out of i don't know it is bloody freezing it's freezing, it's been snowing. Slate snow. It's only England. This could only happen in England. Last week, it was like Jamaica. This week, it's like Siberia. Unbelievable. Speaking of bad weather, wow. Tree trunk blown over, and they've even put a plaque on it. And the plaque says, blown over by Storm Irwin, 27th of November, 2027. There we go. That tree, that stump has been marked. We're heading through the gate. I have no idea where we at. Where we at? Is this back tree? Back back tree? Back roots? I think we are at the botanical gardens for some reason. The botanical gardens, possibly. We'll have a look on down. Well, no, no botanical gardens. But we're back under the footpath. What does this say? Yeah, Northumbrian water. Northumbrian water. Sometimes I just love getting out and about and just going to new places, different places to go for a run, find around. It's starting to snow, starting to sleet. It's actually hillstone. Wow. Don't know if you can see the snow, the hillstones coming down, the sleet coming down. And we have a nice garden here, but I don't know whose it is. I'm not going to go inside. Possibly it is the back end of the botanical gardens. I may be completely wrong. We're going to head off down here, see where this takes us. This road seems to go on for quite a while, but to the right hand side, we have an opening. An opening in the fence, there's a gap in the fence. Can we see what's inside here? Should we see what's inside here? I'm not allowed to see what's inside here, but maybe Sunderland should do, take a leaf out of Storm Irwin's books. And I don't mean fell and knock down trees, but I mean, we need to blow teams over in this weekend. Sunderland do welcome Gillingham, Gillingham FC to the stadium of light. And hopefully Sunderland can Blow Gillingham away. It'll be difficult, a very difficult game. What's down there? There's, 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 see that over there? There's somebody's, is there is, is like a, a shed in the distance? Should we have a wander down? Let's go and have a look around what's going on, should we? So, as you can see, and from like the movie of a couple of years ago, Cabin in the Woods. There's a cabin in the woods. No idea whose cabin that is. And I, I should really be getting on with my run, so I don't want to find out. Really, it says up there, if it says, it just says the name. The name of the company that actually built the cabin in the woods so we'll head off back this way and we'll try and find our way back to the main road and see what's to the end there's a few trees being burnt down or, or, or chopped down or even blown down by the storms over the last few months but you know if Sunderland don't get promoted this season i kind of think there'll be a storm at Sunderland because players will leave i think i think ross stewart will be on his way out Possibly Dan Neal could be on his way out and other players to boot. So, you know, we do need to make a fist of it, a fist of it, and get ourselves into the playoffs by hook or by crook. Yeah, we want to make sure we start winning this weekend, getting three points against Gillingham, because we don't want to leave ourselves a mountain to climb, like a mountain to climb. What we get, get up the bugger. There we are at the top again. Find our way back to the main, day, the main gate, and we'll get back on to the main road. But I'm here at the end of the path. It leads to some sort of, like we said before, some sort of national water. So obviously there's nowhere to go that way. We'll end up having to go around this way. I don't know what's around this way, apart from a lot of mud. 
This will christen my new shoes. No end. We're going to head off down here. Decisions, decisions. Start the snow again. Deep mud. We have a right or a left. We have, you know, the more, the easier route to go right. A nice steady run, but it's going away from where I'm coming from. Or we could hit the hard hill. What should we do? Let's hit the hard hill. Come on, let's do it. Then I'll fall over. Because things are a bit slippy up here. Up we get. Up the hill. Power up the hill. Lift the knees. Always lift the knees. Move the arms. Unless, of course, you're carrying a camera. You can only move one arm. Really pump them arms. Push yourself up the hill to the top. And we'll see. Woo! What's up here? Oh. Farmer's Field. Oh. Hey, right. I've come to the end and I do think I have been here once before. About probably a year and a half ago. As you can see, you can see for miles. I can see for miles and miles. I can see for miles. People say about overpopulation, but look, there's miles and miles of beautiful countryside, which that's the way it should be kept. Building too many houses is not the way to go for me. We have plenty of sort of derelict buildings and, and streets that are boarded up throughout the whole of the countryside, old council houses, old sort of pit houses, to be honest, that we can actually rejuvenate and use those houses instead of, you know, just building on lovely, beautiful countryside like that. Right, so now I'm going to head back down because I can see Hoffle, Hoffle, let's have a look. I can see Hoffle in the distance. I'm sure that's Hoffle. But then again, this is not the way I came, so I don't know. Quickly go up here, past the stumps, up, 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 up. And, oh, right, I've got a, a bit of a dodgy drop here. I'll have to manoeuvre down here, but there's Hoffle in the distance. And my car is about another two miles that way, so we'll head off back down that way, and we'll catch you over in the studio to Jeff. Sorry, I mean mad. Cheers, daft lad. Well, here we go back again with another match day preview. Yes, Sunderland, welcome Gillingham FC to the stadium at light on Saturday for the first in the run of magnificent seven games that Sunderland have to win if they want to get into the playoffs. Yes, so Sunderland welcome Gillingham and their illustrious fans to the stadium and like now wish all the Gillingham fans you know I, I know you're having a hard time with a down bottom end of, of league one but you know, I wish you all a safe journey to the Stadium of Light. Enjoy your weekend and have a safe journey home. And good luck to the rest of the season. I know you're tinkering with, with, with relegation, but I do wish you all the best, Gillingham fans. So Gillingham were founded back in 1897. No other word. Founded back in 1893. Do you know when you read something out, but the wrong... The, the, the wrong word comes out. It just happens to me regular. 1893, 129 years young. Priestfield Stadium is where they play their football. And Steve Evans is their manager. Steve Evans has been their manager since... What? He got sacked. What? When did he when did, when did get sacked? He could... Uh, we're not going to tell me this like. Apparently he's sacked! Steve Evans is sacked! Who's the manager? Who? Neil Harris. Who the hell's Neil Harris? Neil... Neil Harris. Neil Harris. Sorry about this! Apparently he's been sacked! How are you there? What the hell? So, Neil Harris is the new manager of Gillingham. How did I not know that? He's been the manager of Gillingham since January. And apparently he's 44 years of age. Is that correct? 44 years of age. Is that what you're saying? What, talk, talk it louder. He's what? You, you tell me. He's 44 years of age. He's a, he was a striker at Millwall, apparently. And where he played the majority of his games. 233 games in 93 appearances. That doesn't make any sense. He's played 233 games and scored 93 goals. That's about I like it. And he also played at Gillingham and Cardiff. But no, he didn't. He managed Gillingham and he managed Cardiff, yes. So, he did 
Become manager of Millwall after he played all those games. He's clearly a big Millwall fan. He played 245 games. He managed 245 games. He managed 245 games. Won 102 of them. Drawn 66. And I don't even know why I'm wearing them. And lost 77 with a 41.6% strike win ratio. That is it. And for Cardiff, he's only managed Cardiff for 62 games, but he won 24, he drew 18, he lost 20. Now he's been in charge of Millwall, no, Gillingham, for 22 games. Not really, just 12. I'm making that one up. He's only been in charge for 12 games. He's won five, drawn three, and lost four. So Gillingham have a new manager in Neil Harris. Different to the old Steve Evans, who was very angry, wasn't he? Really anim animate on the touchline, very angry, big kind of Captain Pugwash type type of bloke. But at the end of the day, he might have some sort of, you know, you know, we're not going to look at people's appearance, are we? So no, we're not. So there we go. So that that's Neil Harris, the new manager of Gillingham, and you know he's doing a bit of a mixed run of results. Five games ago, he got smashed against Bolton at home, but they beat Doncaster away from home one nil. They lost to Charlton away one nil. Sheffield Wednesday two day, two games ago. Sheffield Wednesday, decent side two games ago. But they beat Stanley and Stanley, you know, Stanley are hitting missing this season. And, and they've been, I've noticed they've had a few bad results of late. So they, lost, they won 2 1. So Dillingham won 2 1. They're in 19th place. They've won 8, drawn 13, lost 19 with 37 points. Only four points off the bottom four. But they played a game more. So, you know, Dillingham are going to have to do something to survive in this league. We want to be in the playoffs. They don't want to be relegated. Some kind of battle may commence this weekend. Now, head to heads against Gillingham. The last time we lost against Gillingham, we had that, 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 that guy in charge. Was it um, Philip Parkinson? Philip Parkinson, yes, Philip Parkinson. It was a horrible game. We lost 1-0. It was a dire shit show of a performance all the way down there at the Priestfield Stadium. And the game before that, we lost in the FA Cup against them as well. But, you know, we've won... Nine, we, we, we've drawn five and we've lost three. So we've lost two of the last three in the last four years. We haven't lost in that. We lost the one, one previous account, encounters back in the 80s since, you know. So it's, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's one of those ones, isn't it? We, we need to win this game of football. But rumours are afoot that Ross Stewart is injured. Or rumours I has COVID. There's something there. There's something there. There's something more than meets the eye. He didn't come on for the first game against. I think it was Poland when they drew 1-1. And he was nowhere to be seen in the squad last game. So has he got an injury? Or has he got COVID? Whatever that means. That could mean he could be missing the game at the weekend. And potentially we could have no Broadhead. Potentially we could have no Pritchard. Pritchard? Pritchard? And Bart could be still out. And Ross Stewart is out. What on earth are we going to do now? Defoe has retired. I mean, I just, I'm going to think outside the box for this one. So, if the worst case scenario comes around, what do we have left? We could go Patterson and Go, Winchester, Circa and Wright, the same three at the back that we normally have. Then, for wing backs, Gooch and Neil. Then, Evans and Mitete. And then up front, Roberts Clark with 0-9. Now, look, 0-9, you know what? I've, I've, he plays the number 10 rule quite well before. He's done it a couple of times. I thought he did well. And he can jump probably just as high as Stewart. He's got springs in those feet, Luke 0 9 But that is the worst case scenario. Now, look, all realisticness, if Broadhead and Pritchard are almost back and ready to go, we should not risk them by starting them on Saturday. We've got enough for me in the locker to beat joining them with the squad that we have. So it would be good to get Pritchard on in the second half. It would be good to get Broadhead, head, Broadhead, head, Broadhead on in the second half. Those two to come on in the second half for me would be better than starting them and risk them from being injured even more. So if Stewart is perfectly okay, then Stewart there, Clark one side, Roberts the other side, Evans, because we know, we know that, da we know that, that he'll start. Alex Neil will start Evans in the side. Alex Neil will start Evans. That's his captain. So Evans will start Mitete and Neil. Right, Doyle, Circa and Winchester. Go to back four again. Four, three, three is for me. That's what I would do against Gillingham. For me, Gillingham, you know, the fifth, sixth off bottom for a reason. We should have enough in the tank to be able to beat teams like Gillingham. No disrespect to Gillingham whatsoever. But if we want to win promotion, 
in via the playoffs. We've got to start taking the game to the, to the teams in, in, in all dominating matches and starting. For me, that three should dominate the midfield. Doyle played a full 90 minutes on Tuesday night for if I think it was for the for the for the youth of England side under under 19s. Now if he comes back and he's perfectly fine, start him. If not, you you can you can go back to your back three and change it around. Or you can put Bart in there, whatever you want to do. Or you can even put Trey Hume if he's come back from the Northern Ireland 90 minutes. He played last night and almost scored a goal. Uh, he could go there with Winchester. I mean, it's a it's, it's for me. I'd rather keep the. The, the square pegs, well, apart from Winchester, of course. But then, also, we've got Dan Neal, who played 79 minutes against Germany under 23s or 21s. The Dan Neal's played well as well. So, for me, we can go 4-3-3. We can revert back to the three at the back. We're going to have Patterson, uh, Winchester, Wright and Serkin. And then you've got your, your, your probably your Evans and Mitetti in there with maybe his Neal out. You know, so we could change it a bit. But I think we have enough players now coming back to, to for me to do really well now i do hope broadhead and pritchard are on the bench this weekend luke one nine again there's another player personally luke one nine gets in there for me but evans is the man for for, for alex neil so i'm going to go for a score prediction i've already said this once this week i'm going to go for a three nil score prediction now have you heard anything about ross stewart because, I mean, I said I've heard about six or seven times from different sources that he's picked up a little bit of a, a bit of a muscle injury, but they're not seeing anything because it's touch and go whether he might start or not. So he might be all right for the weekend, but he might not be there at the weekend. And also this COVID thing's lingering around. With, uh, it's COVID, it does linger around, doesn't it? So there, hopefully Touchwood Stewart is fit and well because we need Ross Stewart in this side if we want to get in the playoffs this season. So I hope you've enjoyed my little run around the back end of Durham. Next week, I'm off for a few days, so I will do other videos kicking about all over the place. A few more running videos. Now, I'll be doing a vlog on Saturday against Ginningham, where I'll be down there with Wincy and his family. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. We're getting towards 14k, which would be absolutely superb. And don't forget the 10 points on the table with seven games to go. Leave your score predictions if you've got the greatest sports noggin and one of the best pieces of news that's come out all season as Jeff Stellan's changed his mind. He's staying at Soccer Saturday on a Saturday on Sky Sports News. Brilliant. Jeff Stellan, Gillette, Soccer Saturday. Jeff, the super Jeff, is staying at Sky Sports. Absolute legend, the bloke. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. Like usual, the video has been all over. Only like it if you never thought it was shit. See you later.